Hi guys, an update. We have been warring with the beast. Pope Francis has definitely been identified as the Antichrist. He has absolutely refused to accept the Christ or Vatican III. So we have been having much fun. I'll get right down to it. I'll read to you a letter that has just been sent to the commander of the Swiss Guard, Daniel Rudolf Anrig. And of course, the Swiss Guard are the 110 who guard the Supreme Pontiff and swear by God Almighty and the Holy Trinity. I'll read to you English version of the oath. I swear I will faithfully, loyally and honourably serve the Supreme Pontiff and his legitimate successors and also dedicate myself to them with all my strength, sacrificing if necessary also my life to defend them. I assume this same commitment with regard to the sacred college of cardinals whenever the see is vacant. Furthermore, I promise to the commanding captain and my superiors respect, fidelity and obedience. This I swear may God and our holy patrons assist me. And then it goes on to say that when his name is called, each new guard approaches the pontifical Swiss guard's flag, grasping the banner in his left hand. He raises his right hand with his thumb, index finger, index and middle finger extended along three axes, a gesture that symbolizes the Holy Trinity. I guess it is something like that. Well, first of all, it says his legitimate successes. Francis is illegitimate. Benedict recognised the Christ before Francis was elected in the conclave. Not only that, Cardinal Dolan, that is Timothy Cardinal Dolan, Archbishop of New York, had all of the information that I forwarded to him in a private email given to me by his private secretary in New York, Kathleen, who was beside herself to hear that the Christ was returned. Uh, Cardinal Dolan had that information for days before the conclave convened as the spokesperson that he seemed to set himself up to be for the media, he should have stalled the conclave and until the result of Benedict's communication with the Christ being made conclusive, which it was, of course, on the same day the conclave convened. So the Holy Trinity, of course, is Yahweh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Christ the Trinity of the Father, Son and Holy Ghost, the three persons in the one person of his flesh body, his glory by Leonard Golart Marshall. So with that, I'll read to you the email that has just been sent. Uh, as the commander was informed that it would be, it would be uploaded to the YouTube. Attached, of course, is the apostolic letter that was issued by Pope Benedict XVI, Emeritus, who has been renamed Peter II, Peter the Rock. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Along with the photograph of the Holy Shroud of Turin overlaid over Brian Lenigo Lightning Marshall, whose image that it is. Here's what the email says. To the commander of the Swiss Guard, Daniel Rudolf Anrig. Dear Commander Anrig, I have been talking at length for some weeks now with Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI and his pontifical staff. He has concluded that I am the most royal man alive and after studying the Shroud of Turin, see attachment, along with a great deal of information he has recognised and announced through his apostolic letter attached that I am the return to Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Trinity, and he has accepted my proposal to rename him Pope Petrus Romanus, Peter the second. I have identified the Antichrist, the biblical beast, as Pope Francis the first, and have called for his arrest by yourself as commander of the Swiss Guards, sworn to serve the Supreme Pontiff, who is Pope Peter the second, formerly known as Benedict the sixteenth. Francis is illegitimate. Once Francis is arrested, he will be held in custody until I arrive in Rome. Pope Peter must be reinstated and taken back to the Vatican to await my arrival. Archbishop George, Father Giuseppe and Sister Maria Della Rosa 
will continue as a pontifical household as they too await my arrival. Peter has my instructions to begin his reign as the eighth Pope of the seven and will restore my church to its former glory and beyond under my headship. When you speak to Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, address him as His Holiness Peter II. He will then be aware you have received my orders and will confirm what I have written here. As of March 9th, 2013, I made myself known to His Holiness Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Then after many hours of communication, he and his pontifical household recognized myself, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, as the returned Lord Jesus Christ. Once this was accomplished, I renamed His Holiness Petros Romanos II. The communication began on, sorry, that's the first. The communication began on the 9th of March, 2013. His Holiness declared publicly his recognition on the 12th of March, 2013, the same day as the conclave began. Therefore, the outcome of the conclave is null and void, illegitimate, as the former Pope Emeritus Benedict was reinstated as Pope Peter II, or in Latin, Petrus Romanus. Days before the conclave, Timothy Cardinal Dolan of New York was also informed through email the evidence of my return and his private secretary Kathleen, who gave me his private email, was also informed and excited by the news. Cardinal Dolan, who seemed to set himself up as a media spokesperson before the conclave, should have stopped the conclave moving forward while the investigation by Benedict was being carried out. He did nothing. On the 23rd of March 2013, Cardinal George Bergoglio represented himself as Francis I to His Holiness Benedict XVI and held a meeting. The conversation between the two being kept secret. This was a trap. After praying together, His Holiness Benedict XVI and Francis met for a period of 45 minutes. His Holiness Benedict revealed that Jesus Christ had returned and that he and his staff were convinced absolutely and acknowledged myself, Jesus Christ Almighty God, as being the reincarnate and most royal man alive King of Europe, Jerusalem, and the throne of David, the United Kingdom. My name, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Cardinal Bergoglio was given the 49 points of the New Vatican III document, which His Holiness had requested after asking what I thought of Vatican II. I wrote back outlining Vatican III, and His Holiness said that he has adopted it since it resolves all of the problems facing the Church today. Bergoglio dismissed myself and Vatican III outright, and continues to this day to deny Christ. He portrays himself to be a humble man, but I tell you, he is an arrogant son of the devil who does not have the spirit of God within him. If he had, he would have recognized me, having been presented with all of the same evidence that Peter was given. Therefore, he is the Antichrist and must be arrested. Vatican III outlays, sorry, Vatican III lays out how the church will operate and how it will end the Jewish Zionist stranglehold on the world via its monetary banking system, as well as introducing a health protocol which cures all known diseases. It was after Benedict's acceptance of Vatican III that I renamed Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI as Peter II. You named Peter the Roman to Petrus Romanus. The importance of the Vatican III and renaming the Pope to Peter will be best explained by Peter's pontifical household, too complicated for an email. So that you know everything I do is made public, this communication will be uploaded to the YouTube and will also be sent out through six million emails daily. Go quickly to Peter, Christ. And in the body of the email too is the Brian Lennigo Lightly Marshal, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the face in the Shroud of Turin, overlay Revelation 3.12, Revelation 19.12, and Revelation 19.13. Okay, so it's been another exciting day, intense. I'll read to you the Revelation, where we're at. This is the Revelation 17.11, which is all, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So we're talking about Pope Benedict the 16th who remains alive. He was the seventh. He becomes the eighth as the beast goes into, well, the beast is destroyed. And that would be Francis representing the old church of Rome. It goes into destruction because with the reinstatement of Benedict as Peter the second, upon this rock, I will build my church. 
the church will be restored to beyond its former glory. Everything, every foul thing will be cleaned out and it will be the church it always was, the church of the Christ, his bride. I'll just read down to 14 here, um, where we're at. These will make war with the lamb. I'll, I'll read from the beginning. And, and the beast that was and is not, he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So that's what we're talking about, Francis being the beast. Uh, the kings, the kings of Europe, if you like, the leaders of Europe receive power one hour. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And that is the, the saints out there and of course, Peter and his pontifical household, they who are with the Lamb, uh, are called chosen and faithful, and we all overcome the beast. So this is what's happening now. It's very exciting. Joel has done a quick upload saying goodbye to Francis, who uh, is, is reported is not coming out of his Vatican hotel to move into the papal apartments. The pressure has been on, and he knows that he is toast. So all good for the good. Anything you'd like to say, Ben? I'm not laughing at all. <laughs> Yahweh said he's laughing his head off. All marvellous.